this evening is a Scottish Farm Advisory Service serial trials open evening, kindly held tonight at Coldshield Farm by kind permission of Keith and Scott Maxwell. In this video we have highlights from the evening including an update on fungicide options following the loss of chlorothalonil by Neil Havis. We have an update on BYDV management by Dr Andy Evans. We have an update on grain markets from Julian Bell and we also have an update on the a variety of choices on wheat and barley from Steve Hood. So we're here at the trails evening to look at some of the trails which are being done uh, here in East Lothian to uh, control diseases in wheat and primarily of course in Scotland the major disease we have is septoria. So the first trail we'll be demonstrating is by funded by HDB. This is the fungicide performance trial uh, looking to control septorian wheat. So we use a susceptible variety and we spray the, the trials with different doses of the fungicide available and then we look to see how much disease control is achieved by these. And this is important because we've seen a decline in the efficacy of these fungicides over the last 10-15 years. Both the Azole group and the SDHI group have declined in efficacy so this trial will help us monitor if the decline is continuing, if it's accelerating or if it's slowing down. And then we can pass that information on to farmers and growers and they can make appropriate choices for dose rates going forward. The other two trials we'll be demonstrating here are again funded by HDB and industry. So they're looking to slow down uh, the rate of mutations in Septoria. The first trial is looking at using uh, alternations of chemistry to try and slow down these mutations. So if you used an azol at the T1 spray timing, you would use an SDHI at the T2 spray timing and vice versa. So that's one trial. The other trial we'll be looking at is restricting the total dose. We know that the amount of fungicide that you put onto a crop drives the mutation in the fungus. So if we restrict the total amount, we can see if that affects the rate of mutations. So those are the trials we'll be demonstrating. We'll also be talking about other issues in terms of disease management in wheat. And the top most important one of that is the EU decision to ban the use of chlorothalonil. So from May 2020, the multi-site fungicide chlorothalonil will not be available to be used in spray programmes. And we've used this in the past to help protect these two important fungicide groups. So we will discuss alternatives which are already available to farmers and growers and also um, alternatives which may become available in future years. Here we are standing by one of the UK's official winter wheat variety trials funded by the AHDB. Now in any one year there could be up to 50 varieties being tested. So these will include market leaders as well as candidates and the up and coming varieties. Now in Scotland we tend to support mainly what we call soft endosperm varieties, so a subset of, of the full collection. This is because the softer textured varieties suit very well our main market, which is grain distilling. So we're looking very closely at candidates at the moment that might compete with market leaders such as Leeds and Viscount. Relatively new varieties such as LG Skyscraper and LG Spotlight look as though they might offer added value for Scottish growers. I'm standing by another variety called KW X Days. Now X Days is actually a hard milling, potentially bread making variety. So it's not a mainstream variety for Scotland, but it has some useful features that might be of value for varieties in breeding programs going forward. And one of these includes an exceptionally high untreated yield. So this is when the crop is grown without fungicide inputs. So we'll be looking to varieties such as this, which might have a potential in future for more sustainable, lower input um, crop systems. So I'm going to talk about the grain markets uh, for the different crops uh, that Scottish farmers are growing, wheat, uh, winter barley, spring barley, um, and it's that time of year where the crops are uh, getting close to harvest and we're just starting to work out where the world market is going to go in the next year. The good news this year on the world market that uh, grain stocks are actually coming down. So although there's a big increase in production, uh, actually demand's going up as well and we're, we're expecting a sort of gradual decline in stocks. But of course we don't know what the yields and things are like yet. 
Uh, and there are a few big developments. In America, they've had the coldest, wettest spring on record, and their crops are well behind. Uh, they're sort of a month late for their, their corn, their soybeans. In fact, we think the areas of all those crops will be down. We just don't know quite how much yet. Uh, what about our own markets? Well, the key one here for us is malting barley for distilling. Um, with a bit less uh, barley in the ground this spring, um, unless yields are amazing, uh, then we expect they're probably to be you know, relatively tight for a distilling market this year. Um, and in terms of wheat, we've got more wheat in the ground. The conditions seem pretty good for wheat at the moment, so I think we're going to have a bigger crop of wheat. Uh, and that obviously puts maybe a bit more pressure on the wheat market. In terms of farming uh, and trying to manage your business, the number one thing is to know what your costs are, because it's one thing you can control. Um, and you know, if you get a good handle on your costs, helps you work out you know, what crops to put in uh, in the autumn and you know, what, what markets are, are really worth going for. I'm uh, here to give a bit of an update on the management of bilingual dwarf virus. Um, it's become a bit more complicated since we've now lost the uh, neonicotinoid seed treatments for use on winter cereals. And so from a pesticide point of view, we've now only got left the pyrethroid group of insecticides. And I'll come back to that in a minute, but when it comes to managing BYDV, one of the key things is, is to remember that you've got aphids which walk in from volunteer cereals and stubble, and you've also got aphids that fly in uh, after the crop has emerged. And you need two different approaches really to try and tackle those. So the best approach to really do is manage the green bridge, and then check crops from crop emergence onwards. And if you're seeing aphid colonies present, rather than just an individual aphid on its own, then you may need to consider using a pyrethroid insecticide spray. But after you've put the spray on, it's worth then checking the crop again, maybe a week or so later, just to make sure that the aphids have been killed off. If there's still aphids there, it could potentially be the grain aphid, in which case, your best approach then is to contact your local uh, FAS Farm Advisory Service consultant and they will be able to advise you whether um, you may need to put another insecticide treatment on. But as it stands at the moment, unless new insecticides come on the market in the next few months, we are stuck with using pyrethroid insecticides for controlling aphids. There's more information on the management of Balliola dwarf virus in a FAS technical note which is on the FAS website. Now the purpose of these trials is to look at the, the current leading varieties and then test them with the new varieties coming through a nationwide testing system. So for example, we've had the market leader Concerto, which has now been taken over last year, as of last year, by the relatively new variety Laureate. So these two will be vying for the main market share in Scotland come this harvest. Within this trial, we've also got varieties that provide a smaller part of the Scottish intake, including KWS Sassy and Sienna, and recently uh, approved by the Malting Barley Committee. Here I'm standing in front of LG Diablo, which we expect this very high yielding variety, high quality variety, to make inroads into the Scottish intake from next year. Today we're looking at some integrated pest management trials and so specifically we're looking at integrated disease management of spring barley crops. Um, we're looking at alternatives to traditional fungicides um, and by that we mean biologicals and these trials in particular are looking at elicitors. So these are products that the plant recognises as a potential threat even though they're not and that induces a resistant response. What we're finding is that when we use the seed treatments and uh, some of the uh, elicitors at T0, we're seeing very effective control when used in combination with a reduced rate fungicide program. So that would be half the recommended rate of fungicide, potentially offering solutions to the issues that we have going forward with the loss of actives due to regulation and the evolution of resistance. Um, but what we're trying to do is reduce the unnecessary use of fungicide. So it follows on from the kind of things that Henry's been talking about. But one of the things that we're interested in is trying to determine when crops need to be protected from disease. Um, traditionally, we would treat a spring barley crop 
at the start of stem extension and at the uh, just before ear emergence. And we know that it's important to try and uh, maximise the number of grains that the crop produces in order to maximise the yield. And really those fungicide timings are a reflection of that critical period for protection. So one of the things that we were interested in is trying to decide or determine whether we can reduce the, the use of fungicide at that first application timing based on a consideration of the rhynchosporium risk. Um, so we've been comparing different fungicide timings with varieties that have got a higher resistance to rhynchosporium with those that have got a lower resistance to, to, to rhynchosporium. And you can see here in this crop, um, this is a completely untreated crop. We've had a lot of rain this year, but it's completely clean. We can't see any disease in there at all. So if we had put on a fungicide um, at that first application timing, it would have been both a waste of money and would have increased pressure on, uh, on pathogens to, to evolve resistance to, to that fungicide. Mm -hmm.